It's, it's Jurassic James, and on this Jurassic James Explains, we're looking at Stegosaurus. Now, this is a very special topic for me because this species or genus is why I do these videos. I've always used the example of Stegosaurus as how the figures are so different and incorrect, even the newer ones. So here we are, let's get started. Same rules apply, newest models to, sorry, older models to newest models. So we're gonna go through time. But the first one to point out is my very first Stegosaurus figure. This is from my childhood back in the 1900s when I was growing up kids, uh, the late 1900s. But the idea is that um, as far as it goes, I mean, Stegosaurus was named was named in 19, no, 1877 by Charles Marsh, the paleontologist. And the features that are always iconic were already here. The small head flipping down because the legs are longer than the arms. The plates in the back, the plates means, especially the name Stegosaurus means roof lizard because the plates in the back look like roof tile. At the time, Marsh initially thought it was maybe some kind of marine animal, these plates coming out sideways, but that's been revised, of course. And here we have our tail, tail spikes. Now, one thing to point out with the foot is that the toes actually go all the way around the foot. Like there's, instead of having the toes one direction, there's like little toe marks like this, but they have like elephantine feet. Uh, you can't see it on this model. I'm gonna show out the bigger ones, but that's obviously incorrect. But again, this is one of the first things I had. And imagine those like dollar store or like grocery store packed dinosaurs. This is the same. I, I've seen the same kind of pack in stores like now. Um, so the next model I have is from the British Museum. And this is more science-based, obviously. The idea is they took their proportions and measurements and said, let's make an actual scientific you know, model that's the same size and space, and they are equal size to other models of the same make. Um, I've seen where people have used models like these to calculate dinosaur mass. The problem with that, of course, is this is a solid piece of plastic, not a living animal. There are air sacs, there's lungs, there's blood, these things that are variations of mass, you know, and weight and density, sorry, not weight, density. Um, but anyway, so this guy hits all the main marks, you know, tiny little head, plates in the back, and the spikes in the tail, there's four here. Um, the plate arrangement, it changes based on time, and, I, and I'm gonna cover that more with the actual, the bigger models. Uh, but on the front, it has three, there's three toes, and you can't quite see the fingers, or the, the first digits, but overall, for the time it was made, this is a pretty good model. It gets, it gets the point across, you know it, it's iconic. Um, the first question I always get is why the Stegosaurus have plates? And the answer officially is, of course, we don't know. But the idea it, is, uh, there's several ideas out there. First of all, the number one idea, number one for any animal weird feature is getting boyfriend and girlfriends or mate selection, you know. And the idea is that having plates or spines or, easy, you know, crests, they're very ornate, they display, they turn different colors, possibly with blood vessels. And there are blood vessels in along the plates, so they may have like blush red kind of thing. But I always tell people the best way to tell what a Stegosaurus plates are, probably probably for, is if you take one and you just cover the plates. The animal looks very small and very you know not very specialized. The plates make it look taller, you know, makes it look more more threatening. Uh, this is one of the in the eighties the Dino Riders where they actually had it where you have figures that rode dinosaurs into battle. You know, it was eighties, different time, kids. But the idea here is that they did create this whole line of like cool models so this is my uh I, I never bought the dino uh rider figure like the pack i, was, I wasn't into that when i was a kid um there's this thing that optimus prime calls ebay which is why i got this guy and this this guy so one thing i point out here is this correcting the feet it has three toes that is the number one complaint i have with stegosaurus models number of fingers and toes stegosaurus had three toes and it's pine limb um and it's not like t-rex where it's hind limb had the three bit claws so this is the right leg, three bit claws, the little dew claw, and then what was initially this one here is a piece of a notch of bone in the ankle that's not visible outside the animal. That shows that there was a five-toed ancestor that they reduced down to, you know, what they have. These guys just have three toes in their feet, period. Uh, the four limbs and hands have five digits, um, but do you know, and we're going to see it in other models, but the first two are exceptionally long, the second two are more like, you know, little small uh, claws or nubs, and, and the fifth one is just almost in the, in, in the hand. In, in the in the skin uh again given the time what makes it stand out is it's kind of like this almost like not hunchback but the idea that it's like really tucked in and that's why marsh thought it was on two legs it was a biped uh but it turns out if you look at the like the biomechanics of the animal walking they weren't very fast anyway because if they you know the, the back legs would overpower the front legs but the idea is that they they were they had these exceptionally short arms so if theorized they could raise them on two legs 
to feed sometimes, but just walk and graze on, on all four. Now the next one's my my first like large model of my collection, um, initially back in the 90s. Uh, this guy is for, there's a, a company called Imperial, and they have a lot of big figures. I've reviewed some of them before. And what's really special is that the plates are kind of like two by two. And there were theories in the 90s and ideas that maybe the plates used to cool the animal off that like, you know, they actually took some plates models and put them in a wind tunnel and the wind blew through the hair and, and it seems to kind of whisk up to, you know, remove heat from the animal. Um, we often think of dinosaurs being warm blooded or endo endothermic, um, but we often forget too that these animals are in open plains, there's these regions, and if you are warm blooded, your concern is keeping cool. If you study an elephant or a rhino or a hippo, they're always trying to keep their bodies cool in the heat of the day. So the plates having that ability made, was, was a very valid idea. Um, of course, the number one idea among all paleontologists usually is, is mate selection. It's very, you know, uh, because they actually have found uh, in the same bone bed, the same rock layer, you know, set of sources where there's two different plate designs and they're theorizing that, well, the two ideas are one, they're different ages together, but the other, th other idea is that they're probably different uh, male and female. And the idea here is that if you look at the, the, the bones, there's like, it's like trees have gross rings. There are rings and that's their bones. And the stegosaurus they find have the different plates in the same site, have the same number of rings. So they're around the same age, but there's different size plates, which implies, you know, male and female in that case. Um, but the problem with having the stegosaurus plates be like side by side entirely is one, there aren't enough plates on any skeleton that shows this kind of layout. And then two, no two plates are exactly the same. So just like we're bilateral, my hands are pretty equal, my feet are pretty equal, there's no two plates that are equal shape and size. So that's why we see often this kind of like back and forth, this one's a little closer, but the kind of back and forth and back and forth design to kind of make the plates kind of sound of in random space, not random, but close to random spaces. Uh, our next big science push would be uh, Car Carnegie or Safari actually. And they often do the repaints. And, I, and I, you know, as a kid, I was always a sucker for repaints because I like to build herds and stuff. And I think I pulled it off here. But overall, you have the, the, the four tail spikes. There are three toes on the animal. The hand has all five. Um, the plates, over, again, are staggered, basically. The head's very tiny. Now, um, people often make the whole joke or there's a belief in pop culture that Stegosaurus has a small brain. And it does, by comparison to other dinosaurs. But um, it has a very small head. And I remember um, thinking, you know, these animals like these guys with long necks, they have these t big bodies, tiny heads, and they're having to take all this food in. But I remember I had an epiphany. I was watching, um, what was it, Godzilla versus Kong. And spoiler, they were fighting in um, Hong Kong in the scene. And I remember uh, if you watch the King Kong movies, he, al he always grabs the animal's head and kind of, you know, dispatches it that way. And in the new Godzilla, uh, his head's very, relatively small. And I remember he's trying to grab the head and it's like dodging around. And, in the, and I remember in a the theater, I'm thinking like, oh, that's how, why Stegosaurus has a small head. Because it's hard for the predator to, to pinpoint it when it's, you know, attacking. Again, this is speculation, but it does have an exceptionally small head for a dinosaur, given its body and size. And the Carnegie one here, uh, sorry, spear, uh, Sapphire, Sapphire, Safari, Stegosaurus chose that. Now, one of my next big Stegosaurus was the Jurassic Park one. Now, I'm not sure if you kids, kids understand that when I was a kid, this was like the gold standard as far as toys go. Jurassic Park set the standard by having these rubbery dinosaur skin. They had the trademark like dino damage. Um, and, you know, they, it was just a different class of model. It was, you know, toy it fed out among others. Um, what they basically did to the plates is they just had one other back and forth, very simple. What really confused me as a kid was the tail spike, that there's only two spikes here. And there's plates here, but there's only two spikes. And I remember as a kid, I mean, when you're really young, you don't know. I mean, you, I believed that if there was a toy that was made, it was accurate. I, I, I couldn't imagine as a kid that someone would design, manufacture, and output a toy that wasn't based on like a lot of good science. So I, I thought, was there a species of Stegosaurus that only had two spikes? That's interesting, that's very new. Um, as I got older, I was like, oh, no, that's that's really, really wrong. <laughs> there, there is no species with just two spikes like that. They all have, they have four or more, some tape situations. Um, but again, a little rubbery skin for the swinging tail. Uh, what it did do exceptional is the, the four, the hand. 
where on the Jurassic Park one, they have these two longer claws on the first two toes, and that the first inner two toes have those longer claws, like a hoof almost, and the next two have a smaller set, and the fifth one would have been under the skin or, you know, very hard to see. That was super accurate um, among all the source models. Uh, but there were four toes in the back, so the number's off. But I remember this was a very unique and special design, and it stood out, and it's, I, I, I have to prevent being blinded by nostalgia. So I'm, you know, for me, it's a childhood connection, emotional connection, and look at just the science. Uh, the head's really tiny. I will say it's interesting that, that there's, the teeth look like human teeth in that they're these flat, like molar cow-like teeth. Um, Stegosaurus didn't have that. They had a little, little peg design. Now their teeth were very different than other like herbivores in its time, showing a partitioning or a separate diet of plants than the other herbivores. But Stegosaurus also had a beak. And I don't think anyone else has shown that so far. Uh, yeah, the, the safari one hints at it, but they actually have a beak like a parrot, you know. So that, this is like a, you know, like a fleshy nose, basically. That was incorrect. And then we have the um, safari, these bigger models, like this guy, this gal here. And it has a lot of the, the good points. It has, um, unfortunately, four toes. That's incorrect. Uh, the, the It does have the four big claw toes, but the two in the front aren't as big. So that's not as accurate, but there are four. If there's a fifth one, hidden away. The tail spikes are there. Now, one thing that's really interesting to tell is the tail spikes are going more sideways. And it was entirely assumed that they stuck straight up. And most of the early toys show the tail going just straight up. But the fact that they may have actually went out to the side is being hinted at here. But the plates are kind of, you know, back and forth, if you know. And, um, and that stands out really well. The color is still a gas no matter what. But from this model, we start seeing, I see the copycats. There's one like this that's kind of um, very similar design for the most part. Same number of toes and hands like that limbs. Uh, there's a, the baby dinosaur, which I like it because um, the head, you know, if you look at it, the, the eyes are big, the nose is small, the plates are underdeveloped. Those are features you would, we'd associate with baby, baby stegosauruses. To my understanding, we have not found any fossilized baby stegosauruses or nests, to my understanding. If you know of one, put a link, in, uh, not the link, put a um, comment, please. But you know, with a baby animal, they're not going to come out with the horns of the adults. They're going to be very reduced, you know, hopefully rounded off to fit in the egg. Um, and it showed that really well. Uh, now, Safari also had the tube uh, baby dinosaurs. So it's the same model, but it's just a smaller version. I did not see my Jurassic Park baby stegosaurus. Now, the one, one thing that's really cool about the original movie trilogy is that the, the, the human figures came with babies of the animals in the park. So this, I mean, there's no tail spike, unfortunately, but this guy is clearly the, the, the pair or relation of this one or a clone in Jurassic Park's case, this one. And that was really kind of cool. Um, the head was a bit bigger than it should be. Um, the, it appears to have three toes. It appears to have four fingers, possibly. I can't quite tell here, but you know, you have to point across. But 1997, Jurassic World 2, The Lost World came out and they were like, here's a herd of Stegosauruses. Now, at first, we know sauropods, Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, they, they were in herd groups. There was very little evidence of stegosaurus being herds until more recently, we've actually found footprints of like juveniles and adults and things, and baby footprints as well. So that kind of backs it up in a movie, when we see the movie. But here's a figure, and I remember when I saw this, it was so exciting because it was a more accurate figure than the first one. Uh, but they did go with the two plate look, but they are still kind of staggered. Now the down damage is not rubbery skin, it's actually hard plastic like this that pops out. Uh, but the head being this tiny was exceptional. I love this head being tiny. And there's a beak on there, which is really great. The plates on the tail, the, sorry, the spikes on the tail go out more horizontal and not vertical. That's really good too. Uh, there should, if I remember correctly, wasn't there like a, yeah, there it is. If they, you know, you could tell, this toy is like, at this, at this 2021. This toy is like 24 years old, kid, so give it a minute. Um, but you turn, the tail should be swinging side to side like this, which I did in the movie. Um, there are four toes, which is incorrect. It should be three. And there are, actually there's five in the hand. But again, the first two, the inner two should be longer than these two. And then the little nub on the fifth one. Um, so pretty good model. It's a point across. Uh, then there's a store called KB Toys. And this is later 90s. And they had um, these big, like hard plastic figures. And I remember I got this one, in, um, I was on a school trip to San Antonio and went to the mall there and I found it there. And um, the idea here is that this guy, uh, it's, it's a departure. It does, which has 
has five toes, so not the three it should have. And there's five fingers. And again, the big toe weren't, or the big two aren't shown. There's no beak. The mouth does kind of pinch down, but there's no change in texture or color. So, and then there's only one row of plates. Now, this could technically be, technically be wrong, but when it was first, when we we're trying to figure out how Stegosaurus plates work, this is one of the ideas. They're just in a single row like this. Because if you didn't know, Stegosaurus plates on their backs do not attach to the skeleton. They attach to the skin. So we have no idea how they actually move. Dr. Bacher suggests that the uh, the plates can like maybe muscle attached on the bottom. It can be moved back and forth or like this. We don't know that for sure. But again, whether we don't see that there's two, two, two like that, they, they probably probably were staggered as we see in most of the models here. But this design seems to be less so much um, accurate. Uh, I do have to tell it's really big and beady, but other than that, it's not a really great model. Um, this guy here is a company called Dinosaur Valley that was in Toys R Us. And this guy is more of a more of a toyish play, you know, play mode. Uh, four toes, so it should have three. Four four limbs, all equal size. That's not correct. It should be, you know, we went over before. The plates are staggered. The tail goes up. The tail's too small though. I, I would say that much. The arm does this. There's a beak though. That's worth noting. Um, pretty cool model, but again, it's run over toes. Moving forward, there is this pack of like it's like a T Rex, a Diplodocus, a Baryonyx, and the Stegosaurus. So again, it's hitting the same points. There's there's three toes though, so congratulations. And there's four the four limb. The head's a little bit too big for this animal, but overall it's pretty cool. And the plate, you know, I, I would look at this and think it were a juvenile. It just seems the proportions are off from the adults. And then we have the was it Safari, and I believe it was twenty oh wait. Two thousand and seven Safari. So again, it's it's a jump from like this guy. The proportions here are more modern in, in, in imagination. The head's super tiny, which is awesome. Um, there's three toes, really good, four, thing, four, four digits. The tail spikes go up, and the tail's too short, um, but the plates are nice and big and rounded off. And again, the actual plate fossil is more ridged, uh, as more like kind of like jagged, but there would have been a thief covering it as well. So that's, that, would be, that would make sense. Um, yeah, pretty good model though. Then of course you go to like the dollar stores and you see like this guy here who has that traditional. I like how the, the plates are like a pentagon. It's, it's a flat bottom. It's like you know like, like that. Um, the plates usually kind of swept back in many cases, but the head's small. It's pretty good. And there are four toes and four fingers. So that's not correct. The tail spike goes up. So it's more of the old school model. Um, again, I, I didn't realize that anyone can make a toy company and make models. And even the ones I'm telling you that are not accurate. I don't want you to think, well, this toy is the worst. I don't, I shouldn't, you know, it makes you happy. If you want to play with it, it's yours, enjoy it. Clearly I have all of them and I love them all. But the idea is that um, just to, to be aware. So if you're drawing a toy, if you're drawing a model, if you're making something to be aware of these features. Um, so now I'm gonna move these over because we have a lot more to go over before we move on further and talk. So there we go. Now, the big guy here is, again, another Toy R Us model. Um, the, the tail spike, I mean, it's overall proportions are weird, but it's a foam dinosaur, so it's kind of like accounting for that. The head's a little bit too big. The plates uh, are generally a nice uh, design, but again, the texture we're not sure of. Um, there are five toes, not three, and there are five four limbs with claws, so it's four toes with claws. The tail spike, it, they do go to the side. That's pretty accurate. Um, but overall, you know, it's not the best model. But again, if you want a, if you want a big one, this is very small kid friendly. Um, then we have this model who was also reused as a Christmas ornament. Uh, they both have four toes, four toes in the front, yeah, four fingers. Um, but that's a beak. The plates are kind of intermittent. Um, there are different species of stegosauruses. So um, Armatus is the first one named in 1877. And the plate ar arrangement on some of them or the plate amount will change different species. That's one thing to kind of keep in mind too. So in theory, if I were to take these guys, I would break them up by species. It would make somewhat more sense. Um, this guy here, again, I can't remember where I got this one. This is actually, it was like one of those, you go to a mall and you have these, the toy store with the generic figures in it. Um, overall, it's not terrible. There's three toes, four clawed, four limbs, tiny head, pretty long neck actually. Uh, the tail's too short, in my opinion, and and but the and again the plate should go side to side. Now this one is from Batan Batten, which is a, a company that sold at Target, and has eight of these. Now I remember when I was doing research on this, um, Marsh thought that there were actually eight spikes on the tail, 
and not for. Um, we're not sure exactly what communication or misinterpretation was found, uh, but I checked and checked and checked again, and there's only four known ones. Uh, the plates are smaller, but again, this is that idea. The one, the Stegosaurus species Armatus, this is the one I was named in 17, sorry, 1877. Um, there are three toes, and the hands are actually pretty active. The first two claws are pretty long. Next two are pretty decent. The, the, the fifth one should have, should have a big claw, but it's a pretty decent figure given that it's what it's expressing. Um, next we have, let's see. Okay, so this is essentially one of those, again, one of those mall models. Um, not terrible. It has three toes, five fingers. So it's not, you know, Stegosaurus has three toes and five fingers. The difference is the fingers are different sizes. That's what I'm kind of harping on. Um, so that's a pretty good model in that sense. This is one, I think, at Walmart right now with five toes and five fingers. Um, this is often most kids' first experience with Stegosaurus. As far as a model goes, not that great. As far as a toy to appreciate, enjoy it. Um, and then we get to the, the fi our final set. So this one is from, if I remember correctly, it's from Safari. So 2019, so we're jumping ahead from this guy. So this is uh, essentially 12 years later. And this one is uh, way even more correct. There's the three toes are pretty established. The hand is the first completely well done hand of any of our Sega sources. It's the two big claws, the three small ones, the little nub right there. The head's pretty nice. Now, what we don't quite see here, the neck's pretty, has a weird texture. Uh, Stegosaurus actually has these little pebble sized bones in the throat, like all over the throat for armor. Because when, when, the, when the predator starts to kill it, they're going to bite it right there. And they have that. Now, some museums don't show that because in some cases, museums will show an individual skeleton. In some cases, it'll be a composite. So, for example, they'll take several bones from several individuals, like Frankenstein's monster, and make one skeleton. Or this is like one individual, and if it misses a certain feature, they might not display it. So be, keep that in mind. Uh, Papo, of course, is the, the they like these Jurassic Park-ish style ones. This one has, oh, three toes, four fingers, tiny head. It's like the tail's too short, but overall, the same idea. And of course, there's a new 20, what, 19, 2020 re repaint. Um, but overall, it's a pretty good figure. It's what I use for my icon for my second source on my, on my page. Also, of course, if you go to the description, I'll have a link to my second source or the Thyria 4 in the Armored Dinosaur page. Then we get to the final bit, the final bit of Stegosaurus stuff. And here we have the Jurassic World um, Stegosaurus. Now, I mentioned before how in the original tri uh, trilogy, there's a, the first Stegosaurus baby from part one, and then the actual one we saw in the movie, Stegosaurus baby. I, I show you this one. This is the one. This is the one that came with Sarah Harding that she, you know, she's touching it. In the, in the, it's supposed to be green in the movie. And the, the adults attack her. So we see the second source connection. Again, the babies in the original series were made with bigger heads, bigger eyes. The Jurassic World baby ones now are just made, are just smaller adult versions. So they're not much difference. Um, this one has, actually has three toes and three fingers. So, one, you know, less. But this guy here for me was a big deal because I got super excited to see this game come out. There we go, same tail movement. The head's pretty decent size with a beak on it. There are four toes that they're consistently wrong on that. And there are five fingers on this hand. And again, they did a repaint of it. And there's another repaint in the store right now that I'll probably get for Christmas. But the idea is that this guy in the nostalgia world looks more like the Jurassic World figures. As far as the design goes, I mean, I would suggest the tail being more, going out more like this because they do arch the back that's go this way because they have such short arms but overall they're not you know they're either not bipedal so that's a lot <laughs> real quick we're going over stegosaurus uh family so stegosaurus is found in north america in the late jurassic about 145 million years ago right they have cousins there's one in portugal and actually there is a stegosaurus one genus member found in portugal but this guy is actually called neuragia and this is actually a, the longest neck stegosaurus known it has at least 17 neck vertebra um, and again, what you're seeing is that there's half plates, half spikes, which is unique. Uh, well, not unique, which is actually normal. Ours is unique in America here. Um, in China, we have Gigantospinosaurus, which confuses a lot of kids. Um, and it has this really huge um, shoulder plate, sorry, blade. And then there's plates in the front, spikes in the back, and spikes on the tail. It's pretty consistent. So you can see that guy right here. Then we have my second favorite Stegosaurus, Tintrasaurus, 
from Tanzania, Africa, same time, different place, uh, mainly half plates, half spikes, and of course they have these two uh, on the shoulder. They're supposedly one of the Stegosaurus, I think the one in Portugal supposedly has a plate that they think that's the shoulder as well. And then of course there's already, it's, it's a different species, so we'll see in the papers. Um, a very, not dubious, but less known, less understood Stegosaurus is Lexa, I say it always wrong, Lexavosaurus. This is a, from England, Stegosaur. And in fact, the first Stegosaur um, named or known is this guy here. I can't remember how to say his name, but I have, let's see, not out there. So, um, so it's a D. <laughs> and the idea is that um, this is the first Stegosaurus member found uh, in England. And of course, in the British Museum, is, the skeleton is like right there in the, in the wall. So that's these guys. And finally, we have the last Stegosaur, Wonarosaurus, which is had in China in early Cretaceous period. So Stegosaurus as a group are mainly late Jurassic. There's a few earlier ones in the early Jurassic, but by late, late Cretaceous, they're all extinct. So we have this guy uh, with these really weird flat plates in China, late Cretaceous. Now, with that being said, I want to talk about the environment because the video is going a little long. Um, Stegosaurus live, the North American group, live in one of my favorite time periods in Earth history, or fossil beds. And so the, the Morrison Formation is the late Jurassic. And in that environment, we had, of course, where is it? I'll just pick you. We had Stegosaurus. We had Brachiosaurus, which is a very, actually pretty rare in the environment. We have Camarasaurus, which is the most common long neck in North America in that time, uh, which I've actually found from their bones. Uh, we also have a Patasaurus, which was last week's idea, which is the second most common long neck. We have an, also the Platicus, which is found there as well, and one more herbivore, well, one more relatively large herbivore. There's Camptosaurus, which is an iguanodont cousin that's found there as well. Now, as far as predators, there's Allosaurus. And Ceratosaurus. I've done two videos on this one alone, two different videos. And then the, the Jurassic World series have given us some of the smaller animals. There's one called Ornitholestes, which not the best model here, but it's an example of it. So these guys would have been like jackal size compared to the, you know, these giants. They're not. These are closer to scale than these guys are. And uh, Solaris, which is I think only a few skeletons known as Solaris, not only one. So that's the more similar Jurassic environment. So Stegosaurus live with Brachiosaurus. Camarasaurus, Sopodicus, Apatosaurus, uh, Ceratosaurus, Allosaurus, Camptosaurus, and these two. Uh, it did not see T Rex. It did not live with Triceratops. They are a different time period, different region. Um, but that's an environment, basically. I will close with this one idea that we do know Stegosauruses were preyed upon by Allosaurus because we find bite marks on their bones. But we have actually found uh, holes in Allosaurus uh, hip bones where the hole fits a stegosaurus tail spike. And the importance of this is, um, in you know, paleontology, you, know, you see a bite mark, who's a culprit. With allosaurus teeth, you can put them in the stegosaurus bone and you see the bite mark, right? But with the allos allosaurus injury in his hip, take a, take a stegosaurus tail spike and you put it in the hole, it fits perfectly. And no other animal has a spike like that in the environment. And I will, and, and that's been to point out that these guys are fighting. So let me use who are, I'll use, you as an example, that stegosaurus have really big deltoid muscles. So basically it can turn and twist and, and hit with its tail. Um, and the tail wasn't just ornament, it was actually for weapon. We've, I think like 10 less than 10% of stegosaurus found have injured tails, tail spikes, which implies they're using it for something. And the idea is they're probably fighting with them. And the question is, are they fighting their own species? Or are they fighting other species? There, to, to my understanding, there are no finds of stegosauruses with tail spike injuries on them. They're only been found on the predators. So they're fighting off other species, we, we believe. Again, they can dig up a fossil tomorrow to prove it wrong, but that's the idea to date. So with that being said, I just wanna to highlight to you that a stegosaurus should have three toes, five fingers, the first two being longer, the, fifth, the third, fifth one being really tiny, tiny head. Oh, and they don't have two brains. That was an idea that wasn't really published but it kind of got out there. And we see it in long necks, two sauropods too. But they have a, a mass in the in the hip. And when Marsh had a, been a mold of the stegosaurus brain cavity, and the idea was there's no way a brain that small can operate. 
So therefore, there must be some kind of second brain, the hip. But it talks to anyone who knows how brains work. <laughs> That's not how it works. Your brain, like it's in your head. Unless you're self, well, yeah, it's mainly in your head, your civilization. But you're seeing there's a swelling of, of, of nerve endings. It's something totally separate, not a full brain. Um, but that idea is out there. I remember I seeing Pacific Rim, and they mentioned that. And I was like, oh, you know, because it's just out there in this public thing. So I'm trying to squash that idea. But um, in lieu of talking for another 45 minutes or whatever it is, this is Stegosaurus um, Part 1. If I do another Stegosaurus video, it'll be predicated on new information, a new discovery, and less models. That being said, I'll see you next week.